Welcome back. Now we'll move on with the news stories. The United States says it is very concerned about reported detentions and continued restrictions in Indian-occupied Kashmir. State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortagas has called on India to respect the human rights of Kashmiris. Speaking in Washington, Ortagas said the U.S. is closely watching the situation in occupied Kashmir. She called for peace and stability along the line of control. Otago said the U.S. encourages Pakistan and India to resolve issues through dialogue. Meanwhile, Human Rights Watch has said India's restrictions in occupied Kashmir violate international human rights laws. Indian officials said fresh restrictions were imposed on Srinagar and other parts of the Kashmir Valley as preventive measures ahead of Friday prayers today. In a fresh report, the BBC has said Indian forces are committing violent against Kashmiris. Now, the U.S. has announced sanctions on Lebanon and Oman aimed at closing off financing to Hezbollah and Hamas. The sanctions target Lebanon's Jamal Trust Bank, accusing it of acting as a key financier for the political party. In a statement, the U.S. Treasury Department said the bank was a direct threat to the integrity of the Lebanese financial system. The department has also targeted individuals in Oman, listing them as middlemen who funnel cash from Iran to Hamas in Gaza. It says it will continue to work with Lebanon's central bank to deny Hezbollah access to international financial system. The USTR said the action is a warning to all those who aid Hezbollah. Meanwhile, European signatories to the Iran nuclear deal will meet today in an attempt to preserve the treaty. Britain, France and Germany will also discuss ways to protect shipping in the Gulf. European foreign ministers will also be joined by EU diplomatic chief Federica Mogherini. The talks will take place on the sidelines of an ongoing EU defence meeting in Helsinki. The UK's foreign minister Dominic Thierab says the meeting will build on G7's positive talks on Iran. He also says London will call for more international support to protect shipping in the Strait of Hormuz. Earlier, Mogherini welcomed the notion of Iran-US talks on the condition of first preserving the D. Iran's foreign ministry says the US will have to rethink about the new 2015 nuclear deal if it wants to talk. Zarif, after a meeting with Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad, said Iran will not engage in talks till the US stops its economic terrorism. More in this report. Iran's Foreign Minister Javad Zarif is visiting major Asia countries to boost trade ties amid U.S. economic sanctions. Zarif said sanctions must be lifted if any new negotiations are to begin. The United States is engaged in an economic war against the Iranian people. Uh, and it won't be possible uh, for us to engage with the United States unless they stop uh, imposing a war, imposing, engaging in economic terrorism against the Iranian people. The Iranian foreign minister said Tehran is only interested in a result-orientated meeting. We have an agreement. We don't want to meet for the sake of meeting. We need to meet if there is any result. We already met. We have an agreement. If they want to move further, they need to implement the agreement that is not just an agreement between Iran and the U.S. It's a Security Council resolution. Zarif announced Iran will fast-track legal action against a British oil tanker Tehran seized last month in the Strait of Homers. He denied accusations that Iran was behind attacks on six tankers in May and June. Moving on, Yemen's government has asked Saudi Arabia to intercede with the UAE to stop its military support for southern separatists. President of the Rahu Mansour Hadi says government forces have withdrawn from Aden to prevent the city from being destroyed. The UAE claims it launched airstrikes against terrorists who attacked coalition forces at Aden Airport. Yemen's defense ministry says over 300 people were killed and wounded in the raids on Aden and Abyan province. A spokesman for the Separatist Southern Transition Council says UAE-backed forces have retaken control of Aden. The fighting between former allies has opened a new front in Yemen's war. Fleeing war and poverty in their home country, thousands of Gazans are trying to find a better future in Europe. This is not an easy journey and can even be fatal. 
but people still feel pushed to try. For more on this, watch this report. 25-year-old Khalaf, who flew to Turkey via Egypt in June 2018, tried no fewer than 18 times to cross into Europe, mostly by boat. In February this year, he gave up and returned home much poorer. There are no jobs. Life is destroyed here. And the main reasons are the internal division and the Israeli occupation. Thousands of others have had similar experiences. Human rights activists believe around 30,000 Palestinians have tried to leave the territory over the past decade. Many have died in their attempt to flee. We faced pressure, torture, humiliation and drowning cases. We were also subject to shooting sometimes. We only experienced humiliation and tough times on the way between Turkey and Greece. Gazans have endured three wars with Israel and 12 years of Israeli-led economic sanctions that hamper the movement of people and goods. Over 2,100 Palestinians, mostly civilians, have been killed in airstrikes by Israel. And it's no surprise that many are still ready to attempt the journey in search for work, despite knowing the consequences. Now, U.S. President Donald Trump has cancelled his visit to Poland because of the fast-approaching Hurricane Dorian in Florida. Trump announced at the White House that Vice President Mike Pence will be visiting the country in his place. To ensure that all resources of the federal government are focused on the arriving storm, I have decided to send our Vice President Mike Pence to Poland this weekend uh, in my place, it's uh, something uh, very important for me to be here. And President Trump says that he has spoken to Polish President Hans Bridge Dieter and has rescheduled his trip. Now, in Britain, the opposition Labour Party says it will trigger an emergency debate in Parliament next week to try to thwart a no-deal Brexit. Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn says tabling a no-confidence motion against Prime Minister Bonson is an option to block a no-deal scenario. Corbyn says the implications of a no-deal Brexit would be very serious. He said jobs and trade will suffer in the event of leaving the EU without an agreement. Northern Ireland border suddenly reimposed because there would be no deal whatsoever, there would be no backstop of any sort, and he would lead us straight into the arms of Donald Trump and a putative trade arrangement with the United States, which will be very damaging to our economy. Meanwhile, a public petition against the suspension of Parliament has gained over a million signatures. Earlier, the government challenged opponents to bring it down or change the law on Brexit. Now moving on, Italy has allowed 66 migrants on board the rescue ship Marigonia to disembark, but Rome still refuses to lift its ban on the ship entering Italian waters. A Coast Guard patrol boat has transferred the 66 women, children and sick migrants to the island of Lampedusa. Earlier, Italy's outgoing interior minister Matteo Salvini signed a decree banning the vessel. The Marigonia rescued a hundred people off the Libyan coast on Wednesday. They include 22 children and 8 pregnant women. Moving on, Ukraine and Russia have carried out their first major prisoner swap since the conflict broke out in 2014. The Ukrainian Prosecutor General's office says some of the Navy sailors captured by Russia last November have been released. Filmmaker Oleg Sensov has also been sent home. Meanwhile, a Ukrainian court has freed a leading journalist accused of supporting pro-Russian separatists. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Feskov confirmed talks on more prisoner swaps are underway. Moscow still holds dozens of Ukrainians captive, including sailors captured by Russia in the Kerch Strait last year. Earlier, French President Emmanuel Macron called on Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky to resolve the country's conflict. Now, Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis says a settlement of World War reparations will improve ties with Germany. After meeting German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Mitsotakis called the issue sensitive. He hoped the chapter will close someday. Mitsotakis said resolving the issue will strengthen contacts and relations between the countries. 
Last year, a Greek parliamentary committee estimated Germany owes Greece $300 billion for damages from both world wars. Germany has apologized to Greece but insists the payment issue was settled in 1960 with a number of European governments. Moving on, North Korea's parliament has approved changes to the constitution to solidify leader Kim Jong-un's role as the head of state. State media says the amendments will ensure the guidance of the supreme leader over all state affairs. In July, Kim was formally named the head of state and commander-in-chief of the military in Indian constitution. Bangladesh says Myanmar lacks the will to repatriate Rohingya refugees after process stalled last week. Rohingyas led ethnic cleansing in Myanmar's Rakhine state in 2017. Foreign Minister A.K. Abdul Momin says Myanmar has failed to integrate the people. Earlier, Myanmar blamed Bangladesh for the failure of the repatriation process. It said Dhaka did not follow the correct procedure in distributing verification forms. Now, Brazil has imposed a 60-day nationwide ban on outdoor fires as wildfires continue to rage in the Amazon forest. Under a government decree, the ban will run throughout the dry season. The fires devastating parts of the Amazon rainforest have led the global scrutiny of Brazil's commitment to the environmental conservation. Under pressure from the international community, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro authorized the armed forces to battle the blazes last week. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has released alarming data on global warming. The draft report calls for a drastic reduction in greenhouse gas emissions if the effects are to be curtailed. According to reports, melting glaciers will cause widespread flooding and then drought leading to a dramatic decline in fish stocks. At least 30% of the northern hemisphere's surface per most could melt by the end of the 21st century. By 2050, many low-lying megacities and small island nations will experience extreme sea level events. By the year 2100, annual flood damage is expected to increase by two to three orders of magnitude. In September, governments will meet in Monaco to hash out the news report's official summary due the 25th. Bajo is one of the most famous and prolific fantasy coffin makers in Ghana. Mourners looking to pay their respects in a creative way choose his extravagant creations. His coffins are famous among art collectors as well. Watch this report to know how. 72-year-old Pa Joe started making coffins in 1962. He considers himself an artist who sculpts with wood. Fantasy coffins are his speciality. Any design I create shows the work the deceased was doing while alive. Maybe the person was a pilot. Then the coffin for his burial would be an airplane coffin. Once the airplane coffin is displayed at the funeral grounds, everyone would know that the deceased was a pilot. His large body of work includes Coca-Cola bottles, chickens, cars and even a lion. So these kinds of things, if you go for a funeral and you see it displayed, you might think it's a joke, but it isn't a joke. It isn't a joke at all. Pa Joe says the coffins stand as a celebration of the departed's life. Over the years, Joe's caskets have been bought by US presidents, exhibited in art galleries around the world, and photographed regularly, making Pa Joe one of the most renowned coffin makers in the world. And the business story is now stock markets on both sides of the Pacific have bounced back after preliminary trade talks between the US and China resumed. US President Donald Trump and China's Commerce Ministry says officials have discussed scheduling negotiations next month. China has also said it will not retaliate against new U.S. tariffs due to take effect tomorrow. The announcements lifted the mood in New York, with all three major indices gaining well over 1%. Tracking gains in Wall Street, stock markets in Japan, South Korea and Australia are also trading over 1% higher. 
The Hang Seng and Shanghai Composite are fractionally up as investors await new Chinese manufacturing data. Well, that's all for now. For more news and updates, keep watching Indices.